I sat down and did this booklet, and then we'll go over the maps and things. It's the Alabama Bigfoot Society, Bigfooting in Alabama Retreat, October 31st through November the 2nd. And we welcome you to the first joint retreat for the Alabama Bigfoot Society and Bigfooting in Alabama Facebook group. Alabama Bigfoot Society has over 35,000 views since it began several years ago. Interest has grown more and more as the years progress. Last year, we were contacted by Mary Catherine Shrug. Oh, you dropped your ring. I did. <laughs> we, were con we were contacted by, by Mary Catherine about activities she was having here at her home, and uh, it's in Tuscaloosa County. And after scouting the area, we found we felt that it would be an ideal location for further investigation, which is one reason we're here now. We were excited when she began her Facebook page because it uh, was a place that all the believers could exchange experiences and thoughts on a daily basis, which helps a lot with people who can't really get out but who do believe. Uh, I think you have currently over 470 members on, on your site, and you get more every day. And it's lost Oh, yeah. And of course, this last sentence, uh, I, you, I know for, for a fact, we've come a long way from all the ridicule and ribbing that we got when, when the Alabama Bigfoot Society first established, not to mention the jokes and comments that we got before then, before we established the group. We, I mean, people really made fun of you if you believed in Bigfoot. Though most Bigfoot sightings have taken place in the Pacific Northwest, Alabama has had its share of Sasquatch activity. In the article by Stephen Smith of Birmingham Free Press, he states that the Bigfoot Field Research Organization, the BFRO, has documented over 60 sightings in Alabama since 1980. And I have a map, we'll check it out in just a minute. There have been sightings reported in all but eight counties in Alabama. We cannot rule out the fact that some of the sightings were duplicates. However, with each sightings reported, there are many others that are not. Jim Smith of the Alabama Bigfoot Society believes the sightings are becoming more common because of the logging activity in the Bigfoot habitat. In comparison maps from 1940 through the estimates of uh, 2030, the amount of timber covered habitat has decreased tremendously already and is expected to be depleted to just under half the state by 2030. Although scientists are skeptical about the existence of Bigfoot, too much evidence is being found for it to continue to deny the creature lives here. Native Americans have always talked with respect about Sasquatch. Keeper of the forest or keeper of the mountain, big man or hairy man are some of the meanings that have been given to the term Sasquatch. The Indians believe that Sasquatch is also a spiritual creature. There has also been discussion about Bigfoot being able to communicate through telepathy or mind speech. We do believe that they do, use, they do communicate in this manner and we have begun trying to experiment with mind speak on some of our outings. Now, if you turn the page, you'll see the map. The first map is the map of Alabama with all the reported sightings from the Alabama Bigfoot Society, the BFRO, and the GCBRO, which is the Gulf Coast Bigfoot Organization. That's a lot of sightings. And you come over to the other map, you'll see the area, the regional area. Most of the state, the, the counties that have no sightings are in the uh, East Gulf Coast Plain. And like I say, there are only eight counties that have no sightings. Then you turn the page here, it's the Alabama Forest Facts, and I got this directly from the Alabama Forestry Commission site. It says, Alabama forests generate over $21 billion in timber production and processing revenue. That's one reason we'll never stop the loggers. Alabama forests provide over 122,000 jobs in timber and production processing. There are 22.9 million acres of timberland in Alabama, accounting for 68% of the total land area in the state. Alabama has the third most timber acreage in, in the 48 contiguous states, behind only Georgia and Oregon. As far as private timber acreage is concerned, Alabama ranks second behind Georgia. Of timberland acreage, 85% is owned by non-industrial private landowners. The loblolly pine, or shortleaf pine, is the predominant forest group. I'm not going to finish reading all this, but you can look over here at the map and you can see on the next page where in 1940, Alabama was essentially a forested state. In 2010, there's a drastic change there. I'm thinking the estimates are going to are wrong and it's going to be even worse by 2030 than it's showing on here. Uh-huh. Sure. 
Uh, if y'all know this is your come in when we turn on this one in road. And while you were driving over the side, Dick, I was too dear to from the school when you got to the sea. How, how much forest they have been cut. And, right. and, um, and even right up here. And, but thank God we didn't have our, our property cut. That's probably why you've gotten a lot more activity than anybody else is because your property has not been cut. Yeah. I made the comment coming in. I said, well, with, with all the forest being cut down and everything, if there was someone, if, the, if they were dwelling in those, that wooded area, they have to go somewhere else. They move their families around. Yeah, Dorothy feels like there's a tribe here. I think that there's at least one tribe here. Yeah. She also saw one of my kids here and one followed just out of the Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the fear during the daytime or nighttime or both? Well, uh, sightings we did in the daytime when I was here. And they thought it was in the daytime. It was a cloudy day. And, uh, and it, it was raining. Last summer, I was working out that old area of the garden. And would not fall during the day. The the uh, the first and sighting and Robin just heard you would not in my back door. Mm -hmm. The first sighting we saw while I was here, we had been in here talking, and I left my reporters and everything laying on the table here. We walked out on the porch because she was showing me the line out there, and right out there, close to that that tallest oh, tree out there, one just stood right up, just right there, and I said, "Where's my camera?" Uh -huh. It's on and the then, table. Then we went back behind here where. Right. And when we, we went in, there was no smell. And then when and we came out. Ago, we we ride around back, and we come back, and I get out from lost the gate. And I was just, it just penetrated the Jeep. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the most awful, terrible odor there is. Mm. And I, it wasn't there when, and what it was, it followed us out of the woods. <laughs> it did. Mm. Now, if you turn the page again, you'll see what the, the 2013 Pine Saw Timber Harvest Removal is. And uh, the worst county, the one that had the most, was uh, in uh, Butler. It's Butler County had the most timberland cut. And second to them would be Crenshaw and Monroe and Pickens. Well, those are in the areas where there have been few Bigfoot sightings. Is this Tuscaloosa? This is Tuscaloosa County right here, yes. It's a big green county, and they fall directly in the middle of production. Now we're going to go on into another phenomenon, Alabama Black Panther sightings. It's in the realm of the doubted, and uh, we can also add the Black Panther as phantom creature to most people. For many years, we have heard skeptics laugh at the thought of a big black cat roaming the woods, and now we have proof. And these pictures were taken here in Alabama. The photo here with the, the black cat in the, that was taken at uh, up in Brookwood, right? Yeah, what I'm That's in Brookwood. The one directly across from it was in Clay County. Mm -hmm. And the one down at the bottom, now you, you might say that looks like a, just a cat, but when you get a real good look at it, and I had to take this out of a video because it is a video, that garbage can is a 30 gallon garbage can that that cat is next to. And the legs on that cat are so thick, it's, you know. It's genuine. And that, that's, a, that's a place that, that uh, it, we find Bigfoot and the Black Panther a lot. It's a place called Zana, and it's also got paranormal activity as well. But if you turn the page on the next page, you'll see the things that we look for when we're trying to research Bigfoot. And one thing is you usually wait until late in the evening for the best chance of catching it. You got to use whooping, rock tapping, tree knocking, and that attracts the Bigfoot's attention. Then you've got to sit quietly and you've got to wait till he answers you. You can't just be up run, roaming around and everything because they're not going to pay any attention or you're not going to hear what they, they do back. You've got to look for the snap trees and you've got to look for isolated areas with a fresh water supply. You can look for caves or overhangs that could be a possible den for them to sleep and look for uh, directional rock formations. They stack rocks. I've never seen it. They set rocks to mark an area. And then you'll see that this at the bottom is a tree weaving. That tree limb can't possibly have fallen that way by itself because it runs in and out and in and out of like six trees. We've just caught it on the, that tail end. You're going to see broken or bent trees and TP formation. Now you turn on the next page. This is where it gets interesting. These, these are 
actual places that we went and investigated. We went to Yellow Creek Road. I'm not going to tell you what the real name of the place is because everybody would flock in there. Yeah, right. And uh, we went there 25 separate times. Wow. And uh, well, it's not your <laughs> Yellow Creek Road. This is in uh, oh, in Randolph County. <laughs> this is in Randolph County, okay. and that is not the correct name. Uh, we had actual sighting during the meteor shower. That is where I saw the Bigfoot. That is as close to me as I am from my car right now. And and he was kneeling under a tree, watching us watch the meteors. And uh, it was a little bit of a terrifying experience. We've heard rock tapping, wood tapping, rock throwing, growling, and of course that Bigfoot odor. Now this area has been heavily logged and is no longer a viable research area. And it was in this area that Jim had his first out of body experience. I don't know if y'all have ever had one of those, but they're unique. We were performing a Native American healing ritual and he began to feel the spirit rising above the trees and into the stars. And he could, he said he could look down and see himself and the other members of the group that were surrounding him. And he said he felt like he was in a, a sealed vacuum, a safe place, safe in a safe place. And he stated that he could feel the presence of the Lord. And uh, the next is uh, near the same area. It's a power circle. And uh, during this outing, we were stargazing, and we heard the tornado sirens going off in the next town. And that was a little town called Davidson. It was about 25 miles away. We could hear the sirens really, really good. And around us, you could hear the trees cracking in the wind. The black clouds were surrounding us, and we could hear the rain. It was hard and furious falling out there, but where we were, looking up around us, a perfect circle, it was quiet, the trees were not blowing in the wind, we could see the stars, we see the moon, it was this utter calm, dry, did not rain a drop, and uh, down below us, this little, the only thing I see is a blue light across the road, I don't know if it was an orb, I don't know if it was eye shine, I don't know what it was, but it, it seemed bigger than eye shine. But it crossed the road right down below where we were. And when we left that area, there was so much damage, we had to drive around a long way to get home because the trees were across the road. Yet where we were, had been was completely dry and completely still. And uh, we did take some dust from that area, and it does seem to have some excellent healing properties. Another area that we go to is Blackjack Mountain. And uh, we had 12 outings in that area, and uh, we had growling and rock throwing and, and screaming at us, literally screaming at us. And they chased us out of there one night uh, and uh, hit the side of the truck as we were leaving. Mm -hmm. But they had been logging in there that day. We did not know that, but the logging company had red trucks, and we were in our red truck. They hit it with their hand? With their hand, yeah. Oh. It shook the whole thing. Needless to say, we got out of there. And then the Hall Farm Road, we had 10 outings there. We've heard yells and growls and rock throwing and smelled the odor. And, and we heard the footsteps running, and it, was, and it scared the cows in the area. And on County Road 15, I say 25 outings. We've probably been there more than 100 times, but directly Bigfoot outings for 25. And... Uh, we had the grunts, taps, yelling, chanting, a foul odor, the tapping, the drumming. And uh, we also performed the healing moon therapy here. This is where I went when I did the therapy for my, my open wound. And uh, our bodies would respond to this because we're mostly water. I had an open wound. You could take your fist like this and put them together this deep. I had an open wound. And I went to the doctor, and he was concerned because it, in, in uh, like two months, it hadn't healed hardly any. And I said, well, I'm going to go back out and sit in the moonlight like I had before I got hurt. So I went and I sat in the moonlight and I went back in, in three weeks and he says, what have you done? I said, what? He says, I got to know what you're doing. I want all my patients to do this. I said, no, he's like, I'm crazy. I said, he says, I don't care if you're crazy. I want to know what you're doing because everybody has got, got to do this. I said, I've been sitting out in the moonlight. He says, huh? I says, well, you know, the moon controls the tide, just tides are water. Our bodies are mostly water, so why wouldn't the moon help control that? And that's my experience with that.
In Horseshoe Bend, we've had six outings. We're currently working in that area. We've had the odor, rock tapping, hooping, tree tapping, and the answered tree tapping coming closer to us. That was especially when my grandson would be with us. And I, I think it is because that was the first time I took him with us. He was, he's nine years old, my grandson. And every time he would go with us, we could do the rock tapping and it would come closer and closer and closer. The first time he got scared and he says, let's go. <laughs> he didn't want to stay because it was, it, was, it was so close it sounded like it was down by where our car was parked. But the other two times, somebody came and it quit. And then Zana, that's a PowerPoint there. We really like to go there and investigate. It's, it covers a, approximately four square miles. It runs uh, from Horseshoe Bend to Davidson, almost to New Site. And the most active place is a place that we call To Braid Ridge, which is not the name of the place, but. Braid Ridge, Braid Yeah. But anyway, we go there and uh, we travel, we travel in that area one time every night for two weeks. And we would always hear the tapping and the hooping and occasionally I shine. We even had big rocks thrown at us over there at Zana. But it's not just a hot spot for Bigfoot. It's also known for all paranormal activities, including ghosts and UFO sightings. We also perform Native American spiritual rituals here. And there was a, a head appeared in the clouds. It was a complete head. You could see the eyes, the nose, the face, the mouth, and the separate feathers in the headdress. It was like a, a ceremonial headdress. And we felt like it might have been Geronimo and because it looked similar to the drawings that we had seen of Geronimo. And Jim's cousin said that uh, the Smith family was descended from the Apache bloodline. So he feels like it's possible. And on the last page of this book, you'll find out all the names of the national parks and the state parks that are good places to go and uh, try to look for signs and everything. But do not let them know that you're there for Bigfoot hunting because they do not want you to I do need to put deer lick down there, but we yeah, were at deer lick. I know, but what I'm saying is, there's a lot more of them down here, but I've run out of space. Has anybody got anything they want to ask or anything they want to say? Any experience they want to present? Okay. Well, uh, footprint, personally measured 15 inches long, the widest part of it, like here, was six inches. That's a big footprint. Wow. And that was That's in, a big footprint. That was in uh, former State Park, South Alabama. Okay. Little River. Little River Canyon. No, no. Just a little river. Got nothing to do with Little River Canyon. It's a whole other part of the state. It's okay. Not too far from Atmore. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's on uh, Highway, I think, 21. You take off of I-65 mm -hmm. on the south. You take uh, the exit called the porch exit. That's okay. You turn left off that exit to be a big Indian casino. Turn right. You're mm -hmm. going towards Uriah and, yeah, and, the and the Robo, and it's before you get to Uriah. Okay. okay. Park there in the campground. What's the name of it? Called Willow River. Oh, yeah, I've been there many times. I used to live down in that one with a bike. Okay. I saw uh, the more so fast, but not quite as big as the old one. But you know, they got they juvenile. Yeah. Uh, called Three Rivers State mm -hmm. Park. It's near a little uh, town called Sneeds. Mm -hmm. Right, it's in Florida, but it's right on the Georgia state line. Mm -hmm. It's okay. a big, big lake there called Lake Seminole. Uh huh. Okay. You have a question or a statement? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I started watching that uh, DFRO on TV. Big uh -huh. guy. Uh, there's three guys and one lady, and the lady supposedly doesn't believe, but she goes around. <laughs> Do you have yeah. any contact or have you ever met them? Or? We have we have talked with them on the telephone. On the telephone. And uh, Jim has decided that uh, he doesn't believe they're really out for the right reasons to find Bigfoot. Okay. So we don't really associate with them very really? much. Yeah. I never got that from them. I always thought they were wrong. Yeah. I, I think there's what I think about. Started. Me and Dorothy yeah. didn't talk about this. We don't know how many things are going to show up. And you know, I said, well, I'd like for a lot of people to show up, but they've got to realize the more people that's in the woods, the less chance you're going to have an encounter. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. And, 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 and uh, I know the times that I had the encounter, that strong encounter where they were screaming nonstop. Two of them right out here. The next night, um, my mom and daddy came over. And what made me not think that they wouldn't respond to the yells and stuff that they made previously. But they're, they're smart. Mm -hmm. They knew somebody was in my driveway that wasn't supposed to be there. And they responded to it. Like running. Mm -hmm. Now nice I and I saw them, but they didn't. Okay, would you like to tell us about this area behind your house here? Okay, there's three things that uh, this, this has happened. I mean, I'm, I'm a praying person. I believe in the Lord. And before all this happened, I, I prayed and I sincerely prayed in my bedroom upstairs. And I said, you know, I, I'd heard my grandfather had a report, you know, back in the 1930s. He came through the gravel pit and saw it and didn't know what to call it. They always said it was just like a bear that face of a man. There's been other reports that I heard, but I wasn't skeptic, but I knew my grandfather was not a liar, he was a businessman, and we just took what he said for granted and everything. And about 14 years prior to this, me and my son heard something, and it was the same thing. We just didn't put two and two together because we didn't watch Monster Quest or find a Bigfoot. But since they started coming around, there's three things that I believe they told me. One, they told me I'd be safe in the woods. Two, they told me where they were living at. And then Dorothy went up there. We did find signs of them living at. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're hunting season now. They, they move around. Seems like the hunting season comes, all the animals kind of come around us because they know they, they're not, they can't do their hunting around us. That's what's out. And the last thing they told me that that behind my house was a killing zone. And, you know, you kill a zone, you think, oh, God, what's going on? You know? But I believe what they were trying to tell me is killing zone is where they do their, most of their hunting because I've got a map that shows from here back, it's heavily dense or well, wood. There's caves back there. There's cliffs and hollers back there that no man has put a cliff down. They've never been. And that's where they... Do you uh, have your map? Yeah, right here. I've got two maps. Matter of fact, and I thought what I would do, if you don't mind, I get, I, you can see my house on here. You can see the top of my house. And I can tell you, I can mark on here. Everybody can get around. Look, you see this stuff. And I'll do like right here. You just sit it up on the table. It'll be fine. And I will get, see what we'll do. We'll use these candle holders. And put that right there. Now I've got to find which way I'm going. Now, if you notice this map right here, yeah, you know where I'm at. Now, this was, this was made in, I think, it was 2000. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere. So a lot of this far is like this. Yeah, yeah, it's gone right. off the side. All right, here's my house. Let me get a little highlighter. I'll uh, just put a little dot. I know the area, so Dorothy here is. This is like a little magic marker, but it's... Um, when I get to the they told me this and they told me that. Who were they? I believe it came from me. I believe it came from me. Oh, I yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I claim to be exactly a scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, they you know, but, but as you see, my granddaughter and I found that was right there. And these were the three posts that was knocked up. This was after this. All right, I've heard them there. I've heard them come off this holler. There, there is, it's a hill, and there's a road right there, but it come off that, but down in the holler, came up, and was in our backyard one time. And then right here is the chicken house, right here. I saw it squatting there. And my grandmother lives right here, and that's like a half a mile. When we first started here, and it, it was somewhere around here, and each time we'd come out, we'd get closer, and then the second time, closer, and then closer, and then we'd hear it chatting. This is where Dorothy saw it. This is by, by chatting, you mean the sound it kind of sounds like a bunch of little children? Yeah, we just, about yeah, chat, 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 okay. yeah, chattering, chattering. Mm -hmm. chattering. All right, the night that it screamed so loud, we were sitting right there, and right here in the wood line, there was not one but two, and they were screaming nonstop to the point 
that just vibrated the whole air. And they were screaming towards you? Or the, oh, I don't know right? what they were screaming about. You I thought they were screaming that about. was they a big were electrical. They each other. No, they were screaming at us. I was screaming. I made a yell, and then and Martin made a yell, and I made a bigger yell, and then he, he just, you know, it escalated. Yeah, it escalated. They, they told you, I can yell it louder than you can. Know. <laughs> I think they were happy I acknowledged them. So you were having a conversation, basically. Uh, well, I don't know, but I could feel the, my chest vibrating right. on the inside. So like it's so loud like and Martin did say. <laughs> but, you know, the, the bird. But now, they've been on my porch right here, on my house. That's how close they've been to me. They've been at the corner of the house. They've been right here. They've been, you know, broke the tree down. They have broke, uh, the, that's the driveway. They broke the limb right there after I yelled at them to stay out of my yard. They got right on the other side of the fence, broke the other limb out. The, and they are huge limbs. Yeah. And the one out there by the road, down at the bottom, if you look at one of that picture, with it, there's footprints with my foot by side and everything. And, it, and then when they hit, they climb up high. I showed, Robin, I showed you where it was. And out it came down. All right. Now I have heard, you see, you see, right here in this field is where we went back. And when we came out of this field, that's where the smell was. That smell was real, real strong. I've heard them back up this way. Now this has all been cut. All this right here, it's, it's just right, right in here. This is just, they've cut this. Where is their water supply? Well, if you look here, they like to travel with there's a lake, there's a lake, there's a lake. Right here is the swamp. Right. Okay. But you're saying they like no. to travel in this route here. They did say. The water is over here. Well, they that's not an accident. Well, the mile across the road. Oh, so that's yeah. not. Yeah. This is blowed up so huge. You can see my house. I mean, that's I mean, that's what I did to go for. Okay. There's a big lake here. That that's all our our lake. And right. then there's the lake over here. And oh yes, now there's other people that has reported it. Now my mother. Called me one night. She lives right there. Yeah. She heard something screaming in her backyard. She asked me, she called me and said, it's just straight shot. Right. Okay. She asked me, she said, Mary Catherine, what are you doing? I said, I'm upstairs laying in bed watching TV. Why? She said, you're not out there, my friend. Is you? I said, no. I said, uh, why? She said, I just went outside. She didn't want to hear it like, for a long time. Right. And she she heard it, thought it was me. I said, well, I'll tell you what, me and Martin go outside on the front porch. And like I said, air miles through that, and that's just there's a kind of swamp, and it's hollers, and it'll go long. Have they ever seen That anything? is a gas, no, that's a gas well. That's a gas well. Yeah, these are gas wells. So no one would be, because that'd be the perfect place to hide out. This is, this is deserted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, these it's are the old gravel pits. And this D here would be the perfect. And we did go in the gravel pit. These too. are the old gravel pit. And this is where that's where your that's where your grandfather saw it, right? I'm thinking yes. Yes. They said gravel pit. That's only gravel pits I know. And and like I said, that's my grand you see. There's my grandmother's house and and here's the swamps and but the gravel pits are right over in here and they, we came in from uh Yellow Creek Church Road and came down through there. We were all that. out and we had to turn around for that. But I went down there. Now, in front of my, our old house, I'm thinking it's right here with the big oak right here. Yeah. There, we went, I went down through there and saw through here and came out and on my walk. I didn't go. I did take pictures of the lights. I shared them and everything like that. Now, that, uh, Cunningham, she called me. She's a minister's widow. She stayed her, all right, and she said, we heard it. Right. She heard it. And if you'll look here where I live, through the woods, it goes straight to her house. Her house is right over, right over near. Right. I didn't get her part, but I know where she lives, right out of her so driveway. So basically, a circumference from here to here, uh -huh. that's all the big splotch area. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, more than that. You, you're not seeing the dog. I mean, we've got over there on Barger Town. They didn't pick up. You got, you got across Lake Curtis. But it's, essentially, the area that we're going to be working yes. with is the circumference for around your yes. house, like that. Yes, but these right here is what I'm just telling you. Mama heard it. She heard it. All right, now, Miss Smith, Miss Lee, 
All right, here's my grandmother's house. And Smith lives right up here. Mm -hmm. She called me, she told me that her son and his girlfriend one night in Bigfoot Cross, you know, the fire tower road. And, and since I have been t telling people about what I've seen, what I've heard, you'd be surprised how many people. Oh, y'all know. They, they will yeah. come to you now. And, and uh, I, I do play spirit fuel yeah. and stuff like that. Christians go through the same thing. They get ridiculed, you know. How you believe in something you don't see? You know, all that. Well, I'm a minister of the gospel. Yeah. So, well, you know, I just, you just, and everything. I mean, I, I might not be safe. But this, this, this is the thing. You don't sit down and just accept that it's not real. You go looking for uh -huh. the answer to your question. That's true. And there's been other people. I've had uh, Turner call me. W there was one standing on the and they track, and okay, now the, the, the little lady that lives close to uh, Deer Lake. Yes. Um, yes, I'll have to get that map to show you, but she lives, you know, when you, you come around that deep curve going to Deer Lake and it looks like you should have stopped and turned, well, you go around there and then it comes to that B and it says Deer Lake and it goes yellow, for, I mean, uh, Block 15 Road. She lives down there on uh, Lane and that's, I don't have it on here. Mm -hmm. She called and told me that she'd been having some experiences with things coming up on the porch, meeting with big box and stuff, and, and, and you can tell the way to stay up, she said. And she's a widow woman, and she just, you know, and bless Now, here's something now. She's been down in the swamp, like she's been telling you, that long, long strand. And you see that swamp. There's no man is right. Man be down in the mm -mm. swamp. Oh, mm -hmm. I know that. I've seen well, it's like I've been mean, mocked and that big around a little like an anaconda. I'm sorry. Well, you more down there. <laughs> yeah, and the, well, that's one reason we waited till it was a little bit cooler. Uh, but because the, the majority. A little bit cooler? A little bit cooler. It was not supposed to be this cold. <laughs> but the majority. A little bit cooler? I'll, I'll tell you the story. Uh huh. In Crenshaw County back some years ago, in January, that I was worried about being on oh, the yeah. land around where we walked through. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and because this is snaky yeah, ground. They, they, we have what you call velvet tip rabbits. Have you ever heard of this? No. Yeah. no. I killed a rattlesnake. I, it, I promise you it was about six foot long. Looked like a rattlesnake, but I didn't see no rattles. And I, man, I laid that right, right down, down the center with my Mercedes. <laughs> I don't like them. I don't like them. <laughs> <those laughs> and, but, I called my daddy, and of course, I told him, I told him, look at this piece of snake I killed, and he told me I was going to hell. He always tells me I'm going to hell. Yeah. He said, you're lying, you're lying, you're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, daddy, I said, well, what kind of snake it is? Is it my, uh, my daddy? It's one of them slow walking, slow talking. If somebody got this, I wonder if I could do somebody did it. They said it was a velvet chip back. Right? And when mm -hmm. I got it completely dead, yeah, yeah. common right around uh, Alabama. Uh, well, there are some eastern diamondbacks, but mostly timber rattlers. Yeah, timber rattlers. And they hardly rattlers. ever get more than about four feet long, but I have seen one of the spiders. I'm saying, hey. I've killed several of them. We had a cane bat. Two cane bat come out of our field right there. And these are not them. But, what happened? Oh, Lord. Yeah, but see now, copperheads, they don't like, they don't have that. No, yeah. they're they back out. Oh, no, copperheads. Now, but that, those came back rattlers. They used to put you on the copperheads. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they mean. Oh, yeah. They're mean. And, um, they're but. They are even better camouflage, perhaps, than the rest. Yeah, they look like the. They just look like the. Dread, this, and everything like that. But I, I can only tell you what I have experienced. And it's round in here. And like Dorothy said, you know, they tell me about the killing zone. These are gas wells. And these are gas wells. And, you know, there's nobody that lives back over there. You don't even pick up the cement. And that nine is half a mile. I'm going to tell you what a killing zone is. What? Gun free zones. What do you mean, gun free zones? Any place that the law says the yeah. guns are not allowed, like. 
schools and college campuses and so forth. Those are simply killing zones or uh, mass murders because the people that are there have no way to defend themselves. So what are you saying? I'm just not going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I really feel like, like I really feel like it is
But uh, that that was a lot of things we heard. You smelled it. You heard. Uh, yeah, it. I, I smelled it. it before. I was bad. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got about 20 of them. Now, I was asking you, I know what I have, but did you know of any other places in Dusty Lake that's close around the meeting? I know in Brookwood. They're in Brookwood. Yeah, that's yeah. most of what I've seen in Has Brookwood. Any BFRO investigator been here? I'm not BFRO. Oh, oh, they have called. See, that's what I'm saying. This happened on May, March 31st. Because there's a report on the BFRO's website from oh, somewhere in Tuscaloosa okay. County. Okay. Oh, let, me, let me tell you about. Investigated by Mike Brumford. No. They have taken a lot of the stuff that we reported. This is the reason Jim doesn't like to deal with them. He would, he would them. tell them what, what happened. They would take it and they change it from this female person told me this to this black person told me this and use the exact same data oh, so that Jim sorry. gave them. Oh. Oh. That sounds real familiar. Well, I just wonder because there's so much that. activity mm -hmm. here, and yeah. this is a large piece of property, a lot of woods. Right, yeah. And, and, uh, and it's gated. I mean, it's locked. Well, and, you know, and, all they have to do to get the report here report was to go online to the Alabama Bigfoot Society site. It could have been because I didn't make a report. I didn't did call. Did, did call. Did call. Did call. Did yeah, but yeah. they never came up. That, that's exactly what Jim oh, okay. does not like about him because yeah. it's not a money thing and he's afraid they'll kill him. Why would anybody associated with the government not want? the reality of Bigfoot to get out. Because if it realize. gets out, they're going to have to quit cutting the timber. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the, oh, the EPA. Yeah. Well, that is just think there's something that's eight foot tall. Right. And, yeah. and it's going to change My the theory, of people coming mm -hmm. in and using My it. theory is that the government can't control it. They don't want, they you, don't to want you to know about it. That's well, exactly they, right. They would probably well, want to control it right. so that they can get make that's the pay tax. Exactly yeah. right. That's right. That's mm right. -hmm. And that's why the UFOs, they just say they did not the UFOs, they deny Bigfoot, they deny anything that they don't you have power over. Well, I know mm -hmm. that goes oh, well with UFOs. Right. And oh, I know there are UFOs. Well, so let me ask y'all this. We're, we're trying to uh, plan something for the spring. We're planning on, on another outing somewhere in, in the spring. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, I've talked to you about it before, going to a, a very primitive tent only campsite or either the Alabama Gold Camp, which is down in Clay County. And uh, y'all be thinking about that and see which one you'd be more interested in. Let's go. Then you know you know, you're looking for eye shine in that. You know there's nothing to do. Yeah, there's nothing because you have to put all the water in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. We just go, yeah. Just study back over on top of the map. It'll be okay. But anyway, we'll... Uh, We'll talk about that when we have our next phone call. It's going to be the third Tuesday at 8.30.